So welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. On today's episode, we're going to take the Jake brakes off this engine and put them on the cab over. So when I found this truck sitting in that field, it was just too cool to pass up on. And even though it didn't have Jake's, I thought, you know what, maybe we can add them later. And there were, then there was that awesome fan, Donnie, that showed up and reached out and said, hey, I've got a spare 3406A block with Jake's on it that I'll donate to the cause. So I went and picked that up back in, I think it was episode 29 of Project Snowman and brought it home. And it's just been sitting there waiting for today to pull the Jake's off and put it on uh, on this truck because is a semi truck really a semi truck without jake brakes i don't think so so a while back when i bought the um the peat i thought you know what it probably makes sense to get a good engine manual so i picked this up off of ebay and it's got all the details we need so how to set it at top dead center. And then I was reading through how to actually install the Jake brakes. And th there's a lot of steps, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, at the end of the day, all these trucks are, it's a bunch of nuts and bolts. And now again, I'm not a heavy duty diesel mechanic. I'm actually a mechanical engineer. So I can already hear the comments being typed down below of all the things that I'm gonna do wrong. Donnie, you're out of your element. We're gonna give it a try. And I do have a friend from high school that is a heavy duty diesel mechanic. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to come out here today to help me out, but he figured give it a try and see how far you get, Mark. And if you really get in a bind, he'll come out and help me out. So let's see what, uh, let's see what kind of damage we can do. All right, so picking up where I left off in the last episode when I was working on the Duke, I just couldn't get this turbine casing off to save my life. So I tried everything I had in my toolbox and I just couldn't make it work. Again, I still don't have cutting torches, so that might've been able to, to blast out what's left of these bolts. But I went to my favorite Princess Auto store and picked up an air hammer. So what I'm gonna try and do is use the pin deal on the end there and hopefully we can just hammer that out. So, so let's give that a go. All right, let's see how this thing works. Something like that. That's the dangerous end. <laughs> cool. Didn't do shit. There, finally. What a pain. Get out of there. <laughs> Look at that. Well, that was a win. Okay. And those bolts were stubborn.
Okay. One support bracket. There, now I can get to the four bolts on the turbo. Well, three, one's already out. So. Two hours later. Oh, one turbo. Well, half a turbo. Man, oh man, that was a ton of work. But successful, and that's all that matters. There we go. Okay. Ready for a new turbo. All right, so what are we working on again today? Oh yeah, Jake brakes. All right, let's get this stuff out of the way and the valve covers off and take a look at what we got sitting here and then we'll go steal the parts off the, the donated motor there. Fun, fun. Okay, these things are just about ready to come off of here. Looks like they're missing something. <laughs> we'll fix that. Actually looks really clean in here. No sign of water or milk or any of that kind of junk. Just use black oil. Yeah, pretty basic fuel line for each cylinder. See the intake and the exhaust valves. Not too complicated. Okay, let's go take that spare engine apart and figure out how we're gonna mount Jake's. Yeah, so I'm thinking of doing one at a time. So we'll leave one intact if I need to refer to it. Donnie had taken this apart before. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, everything's loose. basically the piece we need. There's all the spacers. A varying thickness, I was reading about those. Okay, so we'll save you for later. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like a bunch of parts have been swiped off of here. So all the valve return springs are gone. It even appears that a valve's missing, an exhaust valve. But that's okay, we don't need those parts. What we do need though is we do need these mounts. And I think you just take this whole rack over. Now this is a, this is a one and an eighth 
and the, te the manual says 300 foot pounds. So these are going to be tight. And I think it's obviously not going to work. So I'm going to need a deep socket. I hope a deep socket is even going to work with that tall stud there. Maybe it's some special cat socket. Oh boy, nothing's going to be easy. How do cobwebs get in there? The spider's been living in this. Okie doke. Well, I guess we'll take apart what we can and then zip over, like I say, to Princess and get a, get a deep socket. Out in the Everglades, where the black water rolls and the salt grass waves, the eagles fly and the others fly. Well, I may not need that socket just yet. These guys don't appear, well, at least the center one wasn't that tight. So maybe whoever robbed the parts off this engine, yeah, didn't go to full torque. Okay, so at least we can take this apart. Yeah. Off of there now. Oh, big old bolts. Well, we'll clean that up. Before we put it in the other truck. Okay. Yeah, that's actually the uh, feed, the oil feed line for the Jake head. And it says always replace that little gasket. So that's one of the, the many parts I ordered. Okay. Okay, so before I get too far ahead of myself on mounting the, uh, the new rack, I actually have to figure out how to get these 3406s to top dead center. Now, obviously, you don't need to on this engine. I don't even know if this one's going to turn over, but since it's, it's right here and easy to get to, I thought I'd, I thought I'd practice on this engine. So what they're saying is you take one of these bolts out and it actually goes in here and there's a threaded hole on the flywheel at top dead center. Well, it's either, yeah, there we go. So one short, one's long. It's either top dead center or you got to rotate it 360 degrees to get it to top dead center and put the bolt in. So you just got to find where that spot is and then screw this in. Now this cover plate comes off and this, uh, this special tool from CAT, a motor turning tool. So basically it's just a pinion gear that goes in there. Oh, I think it goes in there. What's going on here? There we go. And it just engages. And in this case, I can see it going in and engaging in the teeth. I give it a little twist. Something like that. And then you can just use a ratchet to turn the, to turn the engine over. Oh, no, next size up. Ah. Okay. Now I suspect this engine's probably seized, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> Yike. No, oh, she ain't gonna budge. Nope. No, this motor's not turning. Okay. Well, at least I know how to do it now. So, let me see. You'd want to do clockwise on this to make the engine go counterclockwise. So we want to actually pull up. That would turn it this way, which would turn the motor counterclockwise. So that's right. 
Okay. Well, at least we know that we put the pinion in and loosen it. Now I'm sure that that one should turn over easier. Actually, gasket's pretty in good shape. That one should probably turn over easier than this one. This one's been sitting out in the rain. And she's seized right up. Okay. Well, let's take the cover plate off on the Duke and see if we can't put this to good use. It's still winter, but it kind of feels like spring, so I thought I'd open the door and let some fresh air in. Now this is not gonna be quite as easy as doing it on the spare engine, because there's the cover plate there. It looks like there's already a bolt in the timing hole, so it must be one that's too short. So, it's not gonna be a lot of, a lot of room to work, but I think we can still accomplish this. Thank goodness for air tools. That should do it. Not even the grader's out today. Squirrel! Get off of there. There it goes. Just a brutal place to try and get into. Okay. Where's my overpriced pinion? It's in there like a glove. Let's see if we can actually turn the engine. It's giving up the ghost. <laughs> right now you want to stop working? Come on. Oh. All right. Go find another one. Okay, I got it working again. Come on. Oh, it pays to have good tools. Okay, that's it. If you can't fix something, chuck a f wrench across the room. Be a man. That's what's a little shorter. I don't know if I'm able to turn the engine with it. There it goes. Oh yeah, like butter. Okay. Now, you gotta keep turning it until this bolt finally goes in. Oh, what a treat that's gonna be. Okay, so what after, what seemed like about 300 of these until I finally was able to get that bolt in, or at least I got an Allen key in there. You've gotta see if we're on top dead center. So to do that, we check the number one cylinder which is the first one at the front of the engine and we want to make sure the valves are closed which which means we should be able to move the rockers which I can't so what that means is we need to pull the, the allen key or whatever I got in there out rotate it another 360 degrees until I can get the bolt back in and then these guys should be loose and then we'd be on top dead center so I gotta do all that one more time Oh, that was unfun, but the valves are closed. We are at top dead center. Oh, rip my glove. <laughs> okay, on to the next thing. So I got to the point where I had to call a friend. I was getting a little confused looking at the manual and then trying to figure out what I needed to adjust. So I called my old buddy and he walked me through how to set the bridges 
and how to set the valves. What I was, uh, what I was confused with was because I'm at top dead center and one's loose, but then six is still tight, which makes sense. So he walked me through which valves I'm supposed to set when I'm at top dead center on one, and then you rotate the engine 360 degrees and then you do all the others. So I think we can make it work now. Now what I'm trying to do now is get off the fuel lines because they're right in the way. Uh, and of course this engine is a pre-combustion engine so there's another little line there. It's kind of in the way but there. Those come out not too bad. So we'll take all of these guys out and then we'll we'll lift off the bridge. But the challenge that I can't get around is I still don't have a deep socket so I won't be able to torque down the rocker assembly. So I think I'm gonna have to take a break and go off to the, to the west end to pick that up. But no big deal. We'll get that and, and just keep working forward. Okay, rocker assembly is out. So these are the bridges that my friend was telling me I have to set. So the exhaust is different. So I'll have to swap these ones out for the, the different style for a Jake. But the intakes will stay the same. But he was explaining how you just, you put some pressure on with your thumb and then you're gonna adjust this to zero clearance and then add 30 degrees. So I'll play with that. He said once I practice it a little, you kind of get a feel for it. Okay, progress. 